Well, good morning, Connect Church. How are we doing today? I'm so happy and so excited to be here. And I just got to say, I am never going to let Terry forget the words enhanced, don't hide, ever for the rest of his life. Um, but can you believe we're already here in church on the first Sunday of July? Think about it. Let that sink in. We've just officially surpassed the half a year mark. And it seems like only a couple weeks ago we were celebrating New Year's and summer's already halfway through. And I don't know about you, but that blows me away. And today is kind of a bittersweet Sunday, really. And that's because we're ending our Develop Me series this Sunday. And it's bitter because this has been an amazing series and I don't want it to end. But it's also sweet because we got to hear some amazing, amazing topics and, and areas of our lives that we can develop. And today in, 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 on the subject of Develop Me and in the closing of this topic, I want to talk to you today on the subject of faithfulness. And before we get into any scripture or any ideas or anything like that, I want to share with you a story about faithfulness that I recently read. And it's actually a statistic uh, from the year 2015 from the Guinness Book of World Records. And there is a couple, a Mr. Percy and Mrs. Florence Aerosmith, who held two records at one point. The first record was the longest marriage of a living couple, and they were married together for 80 years. The second record they held was the largest married couple's combined age, which was 205 years. Now see, both Mr. and Mrs. Aerosmith have since died, but they left some awesome advice for us uh, on the secret to their faithfulness. See, Mrs. Aerosmith had things to say like, you must never go to sleep, bad friends. If you've had a fight, make sure to make it up. Never be afraid to say sorry. Know when to speak and when to be silent. So Mrs. Florence had all of this awesome advice, but Mr. Percy, on the other hand, had a lot more humorous advice to give. He said his secret to faithfulness was just two words, yes, ma'am, right? And all the men said, amen, come on, don't leave me hanging, don't leave me hanging, all right? But the thing about this story that taught me was the fact that all of us hear the word faithfulness, but the truth is we all have different understandings of what that word actually means to us. And so today, before we get into scripture or any points, I want to read to you the dictionary definition of what the word faithfulness means. And the dictionary definition defines faithfulness as steady in allegiance or affection, loyal and constant. And so today, as we close off our Develop Me series, I want to wrap up this series with the idea that a lot of us over the last several weeks have been hearing these topics and these subjects such as building a legacy, building character, attaining wisdom, training self-control. And we decided as a church to pursue this, this theme, this idea of development throughout our entire year. Because we as a church want more. We as a church believe we are called to more than just being content with being saved and living our lives how we want and the way we want. We believe that God has so much more. God has his promises, his breakthroughs, his development, this process of constantly becoming more and more like Jesus. And we don't want to be content with who we are. We want to continually grow and develop to be more like Jesus. And what I would like to suggest to you this morning on the subject of faithfulness is faithfulness is the fuel that drives development. We all want great results in different key areas of our lives that we are trying to develop. We hear about all these different ideas and most of us, I'm sure, have thought about what area do I need to work on? What area of my life needs improvement or development? And I want to suggest that faithfulness will naturally bring about great results. Case in point, faithfulness in the gym will result in a swole bod, right? Faithfulness in a diet will result in depression. I mean, weight loss, right? Like faithfulness in a marriage will cause it to thrive and be joyful. Faithfulness to a budget will bring faithful, uh, sorry, will bring financial stability. 
Whichever way you spin it, faithfulness is the fuel that drives development. And on the subject of faithfulness this morning, I want to bring to your attention the story of a man we find in the Bible by the name of Joshua. And instead of reading his whole story, I'm going to paraphrase, paraphrase some of it in order to save us time. Um, but Joshua is a man we read in the Bible who, amongst 10 others, is sent out to investigate from the wilderness, and he's sent out to investigate the promised land that God is giving to the Israelites. And so they go out there and they're exploring this amazing land that God has promised them. Because see, when the Israelites were in Egypt, God brought them out of Egypt. They were no longer slaves. They are now in the wilderness. And God said, I'm going to take you from slavery and I'm going to make you my chosen people. I'm, I'm going I'm to be your God. You'll be my people. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to provide for you. And I'm giving you all of these promises and I'm going to give you this land that's flowing with milk and honey and it's all going to be yours. And yet when these 10 spies come into this land that is promised to them, what they see, the first thing they see is the city named Jericho. And Jericho was literally known as the impenetrable city. To get to Jericho, you had to walk through 90 feet of moat and then 150 feet of a 45 degree angle steep incline. And only then would you get to the walls of Jericho, which were 12 feet tall and 5 feet thick. In other words, to try to engage this city, to try to conquer this city was literally impossible. They had special angles and positions in place where archers would pick off any and all incoming enemies. And if you were to try to use any siege equipment, they would hurl giant round boulders down this 45 degree inclined slope that would destroy and obliterate any people or equipment used. And to top this all off, they also realized this was a land that had giants. To top everything else off, right? And so these 10 spies come back to the people of Israel in the wilderness and they bring them back this report. And eight of them are, are saying, hey, you know what this means for us? This means this is impossible. There is no way we can conquer this land. There is no way we can conquer this territory or this city. They've got these walls, the moats, the slopes. You haven't seen it all. There is no way. But two of these eight spies, one by the name of Joshua, and the second, his friend Caleb, said, yes, we can. If God said it is ours, God can provide. If God promised this to us, he will come through. But unfortunately, the Israelite, the Israelite people sided with the eight unbelievers. And as punishment for the unbelief, God now told the nation of Israel they're going to be forced to walk in the wilderness around a mountain for the next 40 years. And 40 years go by and they're walking around this mountain and Moses dies, the leader of Israel, and Joshua assumes the role as the new leader. And after these 40 years, God again appears to Joshua and charges him to again get into the land that God has promised them all along. And when Joshua gets to this land, the first obstacle he encounters is again the city named Jericho. And when they get to Jericho, God gives Joshua this, this strategy. He says, Joshua, here's what I want you to do. I want you to gather all the fighting men together. And you're going to walk around the city one time a day for six days. And on the seventh day, you're going to walk around the city seven times. And on the seventh lap of the seventh day, when you've completed the steps, you're going to blow ram's horns. And when you hear the horns, I want all the people to shout with a great shout and just make that happen. That's the strategy that God gives Joshua. And I can totally see Joshua's face kind of going like, Really, God, like a couple of AKs, a rocket launcher, a tank, like, come on, let's make this happen quick. This is your promise. But God says, no, no, I want you to take these steps. I want you to walk around the city one time a day for six days, seven times on the seventh day, and I want you to do it silently. And the people of God do this, the, the Israelites do this, and here's where I want us to pick it up. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, once they complete the walk, when the people heard the sound of the ram's horns, they shouted as loud as they could. 
Suddenly, the walls of Jericho collapsed, and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. So what happens is the Israelites give this loud shout, and it seems like everything that stood between them and their blessing. It seems like the barrier that was blocking them from the promise that God has for them, the barrier to their breakthrough just collapsed. It seems like the city was just handed to them, and they've now entered their blessing from slavery to city, from bondage to breakthrough in what seems to be the matter of a short hike and a loud shout. And the reason why I'm using the story of Joshua on the subject of faithfulness is what I've come to find out is that everyone wants to shout, but not many want to faithfully step. Everyone wants to shout. Our world today loves to shout. We love to shout our opinions, shout praises in church, shout what we believe. We love to shout what we think. As a matter of fact, sometimes we believe if we just simply shout, God's going to come through. Shout Jesus and the marriage is going to be fixed. Shout Jesus and the kids are going to behave like angels. Shout Jesus and I'll get a check in the mail. We sometimes have this picture that God is like a genie in a bottle. And if we just simply shout loud enough, he'll show up. But I think you'll notice there's a lot of believers today who are doing plenty of shouting but the blessing isn't there. There's a lot of believers today who are doing plenty of shouting and crying out, but it seems like the breakthrough isn't coming. And the reason why I believe, which is what I want to suggest to you today, is the power isn't in the shout, the power is in the faithful step. See, and I'm not, just to be clear, I'm not belittling the power of the shout, but what I want to point out today is the shout comes after the faithful step. God didn't tell them, shout. He said, step faithfully, and after you stepped faithfully, you can shout. Let's read about this in Joshua chapter 1, verse 2 and 5. See, we just read Joshua chapter 6. We read about the shout, but look at what God tells Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, see, or where, wherever you set foot, not whenever you shout, wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, sorry, I went ahead too much, to the Euphrates River in the east or the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Essentially, what God was saying to Joshua is, I give you this promise that wherever you're willing to faithfully step, I will come through. Wherever you're willing to faithfully step, my promises will come to life. Not whenever you shout, not how often and how loud you shout, whenever you step. And I'm sure that a lot of us in this room, if we look at our lives and look at the past and we look at the breakthroughs and the promises and the work of God we've seen so far, I think we can all agree that didn't come about because we shouted. That came about because we took the faithful steps the Holy Spirit was leading us in and God took us to places we never thought were possible. Because it's in the faithful step, not in the shout. See, Joshua, he learned how to step in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, the Bible says for 40 years, all Joshua did was step faithfully. See, the Bible says that the Israelites went out of Egypt into the wilderness. They stepped out of bondage, but they did not step into the breakthrough and the promise that God had for them. And I think this idea, this image is the entire purpose of the Develop Me series. So many Christians today have stepped out of slavery, but they're stuck in the wilderness. So many people are thankful and celebrating for being brought out of Egypt, not realizing that God is not done. He's got abundantly more than you could ever imagine or dream of. He's got the breakthrough. He's got the promise, but we're just content remaining in the wilderness. It's sad that sometimes we believe God is faithful enough to bring us out of Egypt 
but we're doubting his faithfulness when it comes to delivering us to the breakthroughs and the promise that he has for us. But see, Joshua saw what God said he could have. Joshua saw the miracle that God wanted to give him. That's why when when Joshua came back with Caleb, they were the only two people who said, let's do this. God is faithful. God will provide. God will bring us through. And when this failed, I think it's so amazing that the Bible says Joshua still stepped faithfully for 40 years. For 40 years when there was no trophy, there was no Jericho, there was just desert and wilderness and a mountain, but Joshua still stepped faithfully. And what's crazy is the wilderness was so close to the city and the land that they were promised. And every couple of months or weeks or however long it took them, they would circle around and get close to this land, but God was circling them back around again. And I can only imagine God asking Joshua, Joshua, are you still faithful to me? Joshua, do you still believe I can make this happen? Joshua, can I still order your steps? Will you step where I direct you, even if you do see the trophy? See, this wasn't just a seven-day experience. This was something that Joshua had patterned in his whole life. So that by the time it did come to shout, it wasn't just a seven-day hike. It was 40 years plus seven days of faithful stepping. And I can only imagine the kind of shout that he gave when he was able to. And so the question I want to ask each one of us today, this morning, is how do we step? See, some of us won't even step faithfully in our marriage for 40 days, let alone 40 years. Can we honor God with our first and our best for 40 days? Can we not go on that website for 40 days? Can we not gossip for 40 days? Can we come to every service we can for 40 days? Can we put God first for 40 days? What about 40 years? Can we step faithfully? See, we like to say things like, God, I want to be used by you in a mighty way. And God's saying, that's great. That's in your future. But right now, could you build somebody else's dream? Right now, could you learn how to lead by following? Could you build someone else's dream without invoking your own and step faithfully where I'm leading you before I take you to your breakthrough and to your promise? See, we love to shout, but I want to ask you, how do we step We say things like, God, I want want financial breakthrough in my life, but God's asking, could you give with a cheerful heart? God, I want to grow in my calling, but could you serve faithfully and make serving a priority? But see, we don't have to talk about this stuff because we live in a society that's the microwave generation. We just want to push a button that says popcorn. We don't even want to punch in the 215. We want to push popcorn to hear the microwave go bing. That's what we want. We want microwave marriages, microwave calling, microwave purpose, microwave character, microwave service, microwave, di- microwave discipline. We want the microwave. We just want to push a button. We want to shout and see God work. But again, the question this morning is, how do we step? See, we don't want to step it out faithfully. We just want the microwave to go bing. But here's an interesting th- thought I want to share with you this morning. The Bible says that God gave this promised land to the Israelites. What that means is God was not holding back. And what I want each of us to know in this room is that God has a purpose. God has a destiny. God has a calling. He's got a legacy. He's got a great job. He's got the house. He's got the spouse. He's got all these things for us. He is not withholding anything from you or me just like he wasn't from the Israelites. But what we have to realize is our faithfulness in the natural is what activates God's faithfulness in the supernatural. As a matter of fact, God says, I've got exceedingly and abundantly more for you. He's like, Oprah, you get more and you get more. Everybody gets more. But he's asking, what steps are you willing to take? I've got the breakthrough. I've got the promise. But I need to see you walk towards it. I need your faithful steps to dictate to me that you are ready. Because here's another thought. If I can't trust you to walk around, how am I going to bring you through? If I can't learn to walk around and step faithfully, how are we going to learn to walk in the calling, walk in the blessing, walk in the purpose that God has for us? What steps 
in your marriage do you need to take to see the barriers come down? Because some of you, you know the marriage you have. And you know where your marriage could be. What steps do you need to take to see that happen? What steps, what barriers are there between where you are and where you want to be? Because see, so many people, so especially young people, so, so many of them, I, I, I counsel and talk to a lot of young people today, and I love it, it's awesome. And every time I'm approached by young people, it's, it's usually the same four thoughts or ideas. I'm struggling with lust, I'm struggling with doubt, I'm struggling with depression, and I'm struggling with identity. And every single time, I have the same response. What steps are you taking? Uh, you know, you can complain about depression, but are you listening to depressing music? Yeah. Are you struggling with lust? Yeah. Are you listening to the music that encourages it? Yes, I am. Well, then you need to stop shouting and you need to stop walking away. You need to stop shouting and crying out to God because God's not going to come in and magically fix it. He wants you to take a step. He wants you to show him you're ready to walk clean. He wants you to show him you're ready to walk faithfully and walk in the calling and the victory that he has for your life. Amen. The complaints of my marriage is on the rocks. My wife, I, I, it's not there. Well, okay, well, cut back some hours at work. Give them more time. Give them more attention. Go on a date. Go on a date. I bought her a purse, right? You don't want to help. You just want to shout. My finances aren't in order. Well, sell the gas guzzling SUV and get a Prius. Downgrade to a Prius. Come on. See, you don't want help. You just want to shout. What steps do we need to take? Steps that require commitment and faithfulness. Because see, depending on which direction you step out in, it's going to depend on where you go. What steps do you need to take in your singleness? What steps in your joy? What steps for your marriage? What steps for your finances? What steps for your spiritual maturity in Christ? See, something we need to learn is every single one of us in here has got things we've got to walk towards. But a lot of us in here also have things we've got to walk away from. And see, the thing is, if I'm walking towards something, that means naturally I'm leaving something else behind. If I'm walking towards better relationships, I'm leaving the toxic ones. If I'm walking towards joy and towards a full life, I'm leaving the depressing music and the negative friends and the negative influences, and I'm surrounding myself with people who are going to love me and speak life into me. We can shout, but again, the question is, what steps are you taking? What direction are you moving in? And this morning, I believe that a lot of us in this room are frustrated. Because, because we've cried good tears. We, we've prayed loud prayers. We've said things like, God, you said I'm the head and not the tail. God, you said I could have this breakthrough. God said, you said your promises are going to come to life in my life. But the wall isn't coming down. The barriers have been there for a year, five, ten years, and nothing's moving, nothing's changing. I'm shouting all I can, but nothing is happening. And again, the question is, what steps are you taking? See, the reason why most people don't take steps, the reason why most people don't move from where they are, is the fact that faithful steps takes courage and strength. The real reason why most of us never experience breakthrough is because we're stuck in this idea or this area of safety. But I want to give you this analogy. You know, next week we're going to have baby dedication, so I thought about babies in preparation for this message. And, you know, there are some babies who, when you let them go, and they're learning how to walk, some babies just take off, right? Like they've got no concept of it's going to hurt. They'll run off a tabletop, off a chair. They don't care, right? They're the ones that bust their heads but keep on running like nothing happened, right? They just have no concept of danger or fear. They just run. But other babies, you, you let them go, but they're not willing. Or, or you let them go and they just do the fall, right? And they're like, I'm not having this. Hold me, right? You know those babies? Well, I feel like so many times God is looking at us and saying, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Just take a step. 
Just take a step. I have the breakthrough. I have the promise. I have everything more than you could ever imagine or dream of. It's all in your future. But so many times we're stuck saying, no, you know what, God? It's safe right here. Right here is what I've always known. Right here is what I've, where I've always been. Right here, this is what I know. But every parent knows if I can get you walking, then I can take you to places you've never been to before. And so many times I feel like God is looking at us saying, son, daughter, just take a step. Just take a step. I can take you places you've never been. And if I can teach you to walk, then I can teach you to run. And when you run, there is no valley. There is no mountain. There is no barrier that can stand in your way. Because as you're walking faithfully, I am with you. And you, have to be af- you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be discouraged. Because my faithfulness never fails when yours is activated. That's what God is telling us right now. Just take the step. This is what God tells Joshua. You know, in in Joshua chapter one, verses six, right after God tells Joshua, wherever you step, I'm gonna give you the land. God also says, be strong and courageous. For you will be the one to lead these people to possess the land I swore their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Don't deviate from them, turning to the right or turning to the left. Then you'll be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instructions continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. If if you notice, God commanded Joshua three times in a simple paragraph, be strong and courageous. Why? Because every time you and I take a faithful step, the first thing we'll face is opposition and fear. And there's many of you sitting in this room right now And even me bringing up this subject, you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. The Holy Spirit is already whispering into your heart and into your mind what steps He wants you to take, what things He has for you, for your blessing, for your benefit. And again, the question this morning again and again is, which direction will you step in? Will you be happy and content with the complacency you're in? Or are you going to walk the steps faithfully, trusting in God? Being strong, being courageous, saying, God, I know you've got more. God, I know you want me to develop. I know you want me to trust. I know you want me to grow. And God, I'm giving myself over to you. I'm going to run. I'm going to take these steps because you are faithful and you are good. And do you want to know how we get to the blessings of God? One step at a time. Do you want to know how you get to the greatest calling of your life? It's one step at a time. Do you want to know how to get your marriage from where it is now to the best that it could be? It's one step at a time. See, so many times we're just praying and waiting for it to happen, but God is saying, I'm waiting for you to take the step. And as you take the steps, I will grow you, I will mature you, I will develop you, and you yourself will make this happen. Just take the faithful step. One foot in front of the other. And again, the question for us this morning that I'll keep repeating is, what steps do we need to take? What steps for our, what steps for our joy? What steps in our singleness? What steps for our marriage? What steps for our spiritual growth? What steps for our relationships? What steps do you and I need to take this morning? See, I don't know. I don't know what your steps are. You don't know what my steps are. But right now, the Holy Spirit is speaking to every single one of us in this room. And he is telling you right now, son, daughter, this is what I need you to do. Are you going to remain in the wilderness, content with just being free? Or are you going to stand and rise and fight for what I have for you and step faithfully and conquer and take what I have for your future? That's the question that each of us has to answer this morning. And right now in closing, here's what I want to do. I want to invite us all to bow our heads and close our eyes. And just these last couple moments, I want to speak to you with heads bowed and eyes closed to each of you personally. And I want to repeat this idea again, that there are some of us in here that we've got some steps we've got to walk towards. 
but some of us also have to walk away from some things and again I don't know what that is I don't know what I don't know what your life holds I don't know what whatever it may be and some of you are maybe asking yourself this question is can I really do this do I really have God's favor if I really commit will God provide if I if if I give will God really show up if I bring the secret sin or the secret addiction to light will God really allow me to have freedom and what I want to tell you this morning is the greatest, most confident yes that I can give you. Because the last words that God told Joshua was, don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So whatever the steps, whatever the decisions that you're making right now, just know God is with you. Just go. If you want to walk into sobriety, God's with you. Go. If you want to walk out of an addiction, God's with you, just go. If you want to walk towards a greater marriage, God's with you, just go. Take the steps. The battle isn't yours, it's God's, but the steps are yours to take. Because see, the truth is not everything is up to God. Not everything is up to God. God doesn't force you to serve. God doesn't force you to give. He doesn't force you to love. He doesn't force you to pray. He doesn't force you to read. He leaves some steps to you but what he is promising you is as you take those steps I will be with you I will encourage you I will support you I will carry you I will take you to places you never knew were possible for you before and with heads bowed and eyes closed let's just I would just want to pray over every single one of us in this room father right now we just want to come before you and father first and foremost as we're here in your presence we just want to give you the honor and the glory that you deserve. And Father, as we're here, we're just crying out to you right now. Father, you're speaking into every single one of our hearts, into every single one of our minds on what the steps are for every single one of us individually. And right now, Holy Spirit, we're just inviting you to take charge. Holy Spirit, we're just inviting you to give us this courage and give us the strength to follow through. To not doubt, to not waver, but trust that you are God. To trust that when you are faithful, nothing can stand in your way. And God, we're just praying that right now, God, that marriages be restored. Father, we're praying right now that families be reconciled. Father, we're praying that right now the chains of addiction and bondage be broken. Father, we're praying for depression to leave in the presence of your light. And Holy Spirit, we're just inviting you to take the place in our hearts, to fill it up all the way, Holy Spirit, and allow us to walk faithfully in your direction, to trust in you, to God, to believe in you, to follow whichever way you lead. And Father, we're just thanking you in advance right now for the miracles that are going to be taking place, Father. We're thanking you in advance right now for the hearts that are choosing to say, yes, I will follow. Yes, wherever you lead, I will faithfully step. And we're just thanking you for your work that's going to be happening in those lives starting today. We thank you, Father. And right now with heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to make another address. Maybe there's some of you in this room and, and you're hearing about God, you're hearing about faithfulness, you're hearing about steps. But maybe you haven't even taken your first one. Maybe you're saying, I don't even have a relationship with God or Jesus. I, I don't know everything about him, and that's okay. I don't either. But here's what I do know. He says, by faith, you will be saved. Today, you can take your first step, and all it requires is your faith and your belief to say, God, you are my Lord. God, you created me. God, you've saved me. And today I freely accept your gift of salvation. Today I freely accept your gift of grace. And starting today, the Holy Spirit can begin to change you and transform you and renew you to become more and more like Jesus. And if that's you, I'm going to pray right now. And I'm really hoping you'll pray this prayer along with me. Father, I come to you right now. I pray that you forgive me of my sins and my failures. Father, I've done so many things wrong. But I pray right now, openly and honestly, that you forgive me. I pray that you accept me into your family. And Holy Spirit, I invite you into my heart right now to begin to change me and develop me 
and help me with my first steps. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.